Hello, everyone. Um, I thought today I would talk about something that's very dear to my heart and something that happened many years ago. And it's been like bothering me constantly. Um, maybe because my dad's anniversary is going to be coming up like in two years of him passing away 30 years ago. Maybe that's why. I, I don't know. I just feel like <clears throat> there's something like that's keep that's pushing me to make this video and usually when I'm pushed and pushed and pushed to make a video I have to make a video and I don't talk a lot about the paranormal things that happen in my life because well you know I'm so used to them and they've, they've happened all my life it's, it's been a non-stop thing you know ever since forever um so anyway if you see my hair like flying or doing any weird kind of stuff it's because I just switch shampoos and my hair gets really fluffy and it like it, it takes a couple weeks for it to chill out. But um, anyway, um, this video is going to be about all the bizarre circumstances that happened before and after my father passed away. Um, a lot of people do not know about these things. Um, my mother and brother know some of it, not a whole lot of it. Um, for the simple reason, I, I don't get along with uh, my brother and mother very much. Um, they don't get along with me, and uh, my mom apparently says that, um, hold on a second, I just drank a lot of coffee, and I'm like thirsty, I've been getting over a cold. Um, apparently, I'm exactly like my father, and my brother and mother are exactly alike, so it's, it's a conflict <laughs> there, and it's always been a conflict between me and my brother. That's just how it is. Um... But anyway, my father passed away over 28 years ago, and um, the circumstances surrounding his death were very strange and bizarre and uh, weren't normal by any means. It, it was so not normal that it shocked an entire town, you know. Um, the circumstances were that bizarre. Um, but we're going to start on a timeline. We're going to start the week before he died. And, um... Whew. This, this video is very hard for me to make. I I don't talk about these things, and um, it took me nine years to write about my father's death. Um, yeah, just to write a poem. It took me nine years um, because the circumstances were so severe, and um, my mom, my mom, you know, she's always had problems, and but I start crying. Yeah, I'm about to cry because this is so hard for me, but... Um, my mother has always had problems. She's always been drinking, and she's always had like mental problems where she's had to be on um, been on psych meds. And when my father passed away, um, she's put on some serious stuff, very, very serious stuff. Um, so that being said, um, now we were all in shock, but I think you know considering how she is and how my brother is it on a lot of levels it was a lot harder for them um and i'll tell you the reason why in a minute um it was a week before his death and um we were at rocky bayou campground i think that's what it's called it may have changed over the years i don't know um anyway a bad storm moved in a really bad one like I was sent out of the blue, there was lightning everywhere, all over the ocean, all over the bay. And um, there was thunder and everything. And so I ran outside and, you know, my brother and my dad were supposed to be in the bay fishing. And I looked straight down the, the um, you know, the, the gravel road and I couldn't see them. And I thought, well, you know, they have to get out. They can't be in that water, you know. And, you know, um... You know, my dad was very intelligent. He had common sense, but um, I ran down um, to the bay and no one was there. And I got this really, like, sick feeling. Like, it's really, I can't really describe it, but it was really sickening and really, it's like I knew something bad was going to happen. And, you know, you just know. I always know when relatives are going to pass away. Sometimes I don't know who it is, but in this instance, I knew it was going to be my dad. And so I ran back to the trailer and I ran to another spot where I thought they were, and they were not there. 
and I'm like, this this is wrong, you know, the, the truck's not gone, you know, this and that, you know, they, they should be here, where the hell are they? Well, they went missing for 15 minutes, and there was this giant storm, now, and it was weird, it, it you just, you could feel this weird, bizarre energy everywhere, it was that weird, and all of a sudden, they showed up, like, 15 minutes later, and they said to, um, I, I asked my dad, I said, where, where were you? You know, I was looking for you everywhere because I was going to tell you to get out of the bay and this and that, you know. And um, he said they were um, they were cleaning fish, but they didn't have any fish, you know. And um, I don't know if my brother remembers that, but um, he was really, he was about maybe 11 or 12. I don't know if he remembers that day. Um, but I remember it like happened yesterday. It, 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 and it's so hard, it was so hard for me on the, over the years to deal with it raining and it storming for a long time because of that Pacific day. And I never really had a fear of it before then or, or, or would get upset or anything. But after that day, I kind of, um, you know, it kind of, um, just grated my nerves a bit. So there was something else that happened, um, a week before my dad died that we did not know about. Um, nobody knew about till um, my grandfather told us, and um, um, you know, my my dad knew he was gonna die. He knew the week before. He went to my grandfather, and uh, he asked. Hold on a second. Uh, he asked my grandfather, who did investments and things, to. Um, to do two trust funds for me and my brother. And those were done the week before he died. And he knew, and nobody told us. Grandpa didn't tell us till way after the funeral and this and that. Nobody knew except two people, and that was my dad and my grandfather. Um, so, I, I don't know what else to say about this. A lot of relatives don't even really know about this. Um, and if they did, I think, I think one person knew about it. I want to say it was my Aunt Linda knew about it. And that was my dad's twin. She had ended up knowing about it. And maybe because I told her. Because I wanted to go to school at the time. Um, but then, um, the day my dad died was the next Thursday. Which, um, this particular storm happened on the Thursday before. So the next Thursday, what happened was... Um, my dad was never late for dinner, right? Never late for dinner, ever. He was always there at five o'clock on time, every single time. Um, you know, he, he was punctual <laughs> about dinner. I don't know what else to say, them, you know. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, it was late and he, he hadn't shown up for whatever reason and he was late. And mom had called, you know, the office because my dad owned his own business and um, um, so, and no one was answering the phone because everyone leaves at five o'clock, right? Everyone, everyone has to be out by five, right? But my dad always left at five, uh, four forty-five, right? To be home at five o'clock. That was his thing. And so my mom just said, go, you know, told me and my brother to go ahead and eat. And we did. And, uh, then, you know, he still wasn't home. So, um, my, um, Mom said, Karen, you know, why don't you go ahead and put up the dishes, and um, I will, um, I'm going to go to Miss Ship's house. Now, Miss Ship was uh, my kindergarten uh, my kindergarten teacher, and my mother, oh, look at my hair. You see this thing? It's going to switch shampoos. Look at that. It's awful. It's like frizzing and stuff. Anyway, but, um, hmm. so anyway, Mom went over to Miss Ship's house to see if she wanted some Avon the fuck is going on with my hair? See, I need to put my hair back. Look at this. Oh my god. Anyway, I can't help it. My hair is going to do whatever it wants to. Look, look at this. Look at this. It's like this one. And that's not even where my cowlick is. Do you know what a cowlick is? Cowlick is where, <laughs> like, you know, you get your hair cut too short or something, but like you have like a little piece of hair sticking up on the back of your head. 
and um yeah so i don't know maybe this is like where my catholic originally was like right in here and it's doing that because of it <laughs> anyway i can't i cannot do anything about this mess on my head it's gonna have to stay there um anyway so my mom went over said she was gonna go over to miss ship's house and see if she wants to move on so For some reason, I believed her. I shouldn't have believed her. But mom did Avon all the time. I shouldn't have believed her. I, I should have, like, took note. But I was, like, 14 on the... I, or either 15. Yeah, I was 15 at this time. Because I was going into, um... Let's see, 13. No, I was 14. And I was fixing to turn 15. I was, I was getting close to 15. Because I was going to have to start high school. And I should have known at that time something was going on. Um, but it didn't like register in my head, right? It just didn't register. Um, so I started putting up the dishes and everything and all of a sudden I hear this knock at my door and, um, I'm like, this is weird because no one in the South, okay, interrupts you during dinner. They just won't do it, you know, because usually everybody eats at the same time. If you're in a very traditional Southern town, that's what people do. And at that time, that was very much what everyone did. So I went to the door and I opened the door and there was a lady <laughs> from not even on our street but from down the road and um, she was from um, a grocery store called BJ's and I don't know if she's still alive or not but um, at the time <laughs> she she had this frosted perm right and she wore an afro literally wore an afro um, but <laughs> I don't remember her name. It was either Shirley or Shelly or something like that. Anyway, I don't remember her name. But she was standing there at my door, okay? And I had never known this woman to come to my door. I didn't even know she knew where I lived or anything like that. And I was, like, totally freaked out because she was just an acquaintance. She was not something, someone that we hung out with all the time or anything like that. And I was totally freaked out. I opened the door, and she's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, Karen. And I'm like, What? What, what do you mean? What, what you, and I was just freaked out. You know, I didn't know what to say. And I was like, okay, thank you. You know, because I didn't know what was going on. And if you ever have a circumstance where you find out that a family member has passed away the way I'm describing, for God's sakes, talk to someone about it because it will haunt you for the rest of your life. Um, so then I started doing dishes. And all of a sudden, I hear the other doorbell which is on the side of the house which is by the dishwasher where I'm doing the, doing the dishes which nobody really knows about unless they're a good friend or a relative nobody knows about that door in the garage because you literally have to go through one one door go into the garage and to, into another door you know to even and up some steps to get to the other door so um I hear the doorbell ring and I was just like oh my god and by this time I was getting really nervous and agitated and upset because I didn't know what was going on I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, I just knew something was really wrong at that point, and I was getting that sick feeling again that I had had the week before. I was getting really sick, just really, you know, um, just like that horrible feeling, you know, just dead horrible feeling. And um, I opened the door, there was my Aunt Polly, which she lived right next door to me, and she says, Karen, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Are you okay? Karen, are you okay? And I just stood there and I just looked at her because I did not know what she was talking about. I still didn't know, you know, that my dad was dead, that he was murdered. I did not know. And I just looked at her, you know, in complete shock. You know, because by this time I, I, I was kind of catching on to what was going on. And I just knew something was wrong. Something really bad was fucking wrong. And, um, and I just looked at her and I said, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. And um, I closed the door. And by this time, I was a nervous wreck. I couldn't do anything. I was, like, shaking, you know, so bad. And um, so I decided I'm going, to, I'm going out to the, to the front and wait on mom because something's going on. And, um, wow. I hope none of you find out your loved one has passed away the way I did because this is so bad and so hard and so hard for me to relive but um I saw my dad's truck being driven by my uncle Wilbur 
and my mom was in it and some other people were in it and I don't, I don't remember if I knew those people I don't remember um, and I saw that truck and I thought oh my god my dad's dead my dad's been murdered because um, there's no way in hell my dad would let my uncle Wilbur drive his new truck no way in hell because it was brand new that was his new prize truck you know and that was you know he he won't let no one drive it and I just knew who's dead and I jumped up and I slammed down with all my might I just jumped up and just slammed down and just said who's the bastard that murdered my dad and I just felt so much anger like I just knew I felt so much anger you just don't know how much anger you can feel at that moment and maybe dad had came through me I don't know but it um I just felt like he was murdered. I said, who, who's the bastard who murdered my dad? And <laughs> at that point, <clears throat> I did not know what was going on. I didn't know that he had been murdered, which he had. He had been murdered in a, in a bad traffic accident, um, which I don't think was a traffic accident, nor does my brother. We talked about it a few years ago, and we don't think it was a traffic accident. We think he was deliberately murdered. Um, which a lot of people don't know about. A lot of people just, they know it was a bad accident, it was a freak accident, but they really don't know what we have dealt with or thought over the years. Um, so what had happened, um, there is a two-lane highway going to my house in Florida, where I'm originally from, and what was happening is there was a truck driver coming in and he was trying to make his time. And there was traffic that was backing up going into town. Well, my dad was going out of town, the opposite way towards my house. My dad saw the truck driver get out of his lane and trying to go around and bypass all this traffic. Well, my dad saw this, and remember, this is a two-lane highway, and this truck driver was not supposed to be in my dad's lane. So what my dad did was he got off on the side of the road. He slowed down and literally got off on the other side of the road. Anyway, so he slowed down. He got off on his side of the road, which was basically flat, uh, a flat grassy area. And he started slowing down so he could avoid this accident. So he could avoid this truck driver. Instead of the truck driver going back into his, into his lane, he came across the road and hit my dad head on and destroyed the car. I mean, uh, destroyed my dad. I mean, it was just, it was bad. It was a bad. Um, it, it was really bad. I'm not going to go into the details of everything, but the car was destroyed. Um, and, um, but those are things even get worse and more strange. Not, I mean, the the freak accident is pretty bad. It's a pretty bad situation. It's 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 horrible, you know. And it's one of those things that just really don't happen too often, you know, where there's this freak accident that was someone was completely trying to avoid. Um, and everybody was upset because a lot of people knew my dad. My dad worked. Um, he had his own business, and he worked with a lot of electricians and things, so everybody knew him. So, um, the, the funeral came in. We we went to Whitehurst Funeral Home, which is a really big funeral home where um, I'm originally from. And I'm not from Crestview, Florida. I'm not. That's where the, that's where the, um, that's where the funeral home is. I'm originally from Laurel Hill. So... Um, it was the day of the funeral, and um, let me just say that this is how upset my mother was, okay, and how I was holding everything together, not that that was my job or that was something that I did. I think I just, I don't know, I have this thing where sometimes when there's so much stress, I just get on autopilot. I don't know if other people do that, but I tend to do that, and I tend to do things that need to be get done for people, um, and I tend to just... You, you know, and I was I was pretty young. I didn't have any health problems at the time. I, I'm 43 now, so, but um, so I I called every every family member that I knew to tell them that my dad had passed away, and the funeral was on Thursday. Um, so I went into the funeral home, and no one was there yet. It was really early, 
and um man um my cousin joy was there with me and so i went in to go look at my dad now the year before my grandma almost to the day okay passed away and so you know i was okay going in because we had had several other funerals in the family so i was okay going in i was fine and um everybody knew i was pretty much fine going in to see my father okay that's not what happened I went in, and there's this giant long corridor, like you're going into a giant church or something, right? You just walk down this big aisle, and I got to the coffin, and, and my dad did not look like my dad, okay? He did not look like my dad, and let me just tell you, my grandmother passed away the year before, and she looked like my grandmother. I touched her, right? She felt normal. The only thing is when you touch a person who's been passed away, their skin's very cold little clammy but <clears throat> their skin feels normal right their skin feels like a person's skin right and I looked at my dad and I was like that's not my father and I just knew it wasn't my father and it was it, it was like just this intuition I knew it was my dad that being said you know um, a lot of people thought I was in shock okay and I touched my dad okay I touched him just, you know, because I was like, are you, you know, because I just want to know he was, even though he's in a coffin, he was somewhat okay, you know? I mean, I just wanted to know that. And I think most, most people who have family members pass away, um, tragically, they, they want to know that. They want to know their loved one's okay, you know? They want to know that they've prepared the body decently and things like that. You know, it's a very normal process. And, um, I touched my dad and he felt like rubber. The man felt like rubber, okay? He didn't feel like, like, you know, I'm touching my hands. He didn't feel normal. His skin did not feel like normal. Felt like fucking rubber. And so, I was hysterical. I just freaked out. I, I went out. I, I walked out really fast, and I was crying. I was like, Joy, that's not my dad. That's not my dad in there. And everybody thought, like, I was losing it, right? I wasn't losing it at all. You know, I just knew that wasn't my dad in that coffin. And, um... You know, I, and then Joy's like, no, that's your dad, you know, this and that, it's going to be okay. Well, I thought, well, maybe Joy's right. Maybe, maybe I'm just a little, you know, a little crazy right now. Maybe just a little upset, right? Because that would be a normal reaction. I just thought, maybe I'm a little upset. Maybe I just need to step back, calm down, you know. So years and years later went by, right? And um, I'm, I'm sitting like here, <laughs> and it was, I think it was like in the morning, like six, it might have been six in the morning or something, or maybe six in the evening. I don't remember, but it was around six o'clock. And I was sitting here, and all of a sudden, I got like this weird vision, right, of my dad. And I, I have visions all the time, and I, I see the future occasionally and things like that, and it doesn't really bother me. This time it bothered me. It bothered me really bad because it was so bizarre. So I was sitting here, and all of a sudden I get this vision, and I start shaking. I mean, like, shaking, like, really bad. And I see my dad, like, on this weird craft thing, and it's like this weird white room, right? And there's like all these controls in front of him, and he's got like some. Um, we I just dropped something. He he he's got some weird like things in his ears, and he's like jamming out and you know kind of dancing and moving all these controls. And um, I freaked out. I was so upset. And I was crying. I was hysterical. And then I was like really angry. I was like angry. It's like this. That's like this better not be real. This 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 better whatever is going on better not be real this is fucked up, you know, <laughs> and, um, I had a friend at the time, and I'm so thankful for him, I don't, he's disappeared, wherever he is, but, um, he was a UFO abductee, and he was a good friend of mine, really good, his name was Andrew, and he, um, my dad, you know, my dad, he was part Native American, and so am I, and, um, so, because granny, my granny was, like, half, half Native American, so, um, I talked to, I emailed my friend Andrew, and he was part Native American too. I said, Andrew, I swear to God, I've had the weirdest 
vision of my dad on some kind of weird craft and this weird thing and I don't I don't understand I don't know what's going on I mean you know and I explained to him the whole thing and he's like yes sounds like your dad's on a craft somewhere and he's like that's that's not weird that's pretty normal for Native Americans to you know he said because he had had other family members who had had the same damn like vision of like their loved ones being on some kind of like spacecraft or whatever and i was like oh my god it's like you gotta be kidding me get this after i talked to him he disappeared off all off the net computer period i i never heard from him again after after i talked to him he completely disappeared and that's not even the worst part yet So, and he was like a really good friend too. And he just completely disappeared. And I searched for that man. Oh my God. I searched for him home everywhere. Completely gone off the net. Um, so the next thing I thought was, I was listening to Exo Politics. And there's there's another thing. My daughter, um, ever since she was little, has seen UFOs. And we see them all the time now. It's weird. We see UFOs all the time now. Um, and my dad, uh, his spirit comes in and out of the house. And He's always, like, been around me um, on and off, and I always hear, you know, I, I talk to him occasionally anyway, but that, that vision just really disturbed me because I felt like, what the fuck, you know? And then I had to literally sit down, and I told my children about it. I said, look, I said, I don't really understand what's going on with the situation, but if your grandfather just mysteriously shows up one day, you know, on our doorstep, you know, then I guess that's him, and I don't know what to say about it. Um, so anyway, um, I was looking, listening to um, Exo Politics at the time a lot, and so I contacted someone, you know, and I thought, I'm going to ask them about this rubbery skin thing, you know, because it's weird. And only enough, I asked um, my friend, and he's still my friend, and he hasn't disappeared, thank God, but um, I asked him about it, and he's a lot older than me, and I said, uh, were um, clones... Um, were there clones in the 80s, you know, in the late 80s? Were there clones and this and that? And he said, yes. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. And he said, no. He said, said they, they've been around a long time. It's just people don't, you know, know they're there. And they don't know the text there and this and that. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, this is getting crazier by the day. Um, so... Oh my god, and I have to tell you guys something else. Um, we did sue the company that hit my dad and get this shit. They this was a lawsuit, right? And it so fucking weird. This was a lawsuit, but it had nothing to do with them kind of attacking us or anything like that. Um, we just wanted justice for my father, you know, because he was because of the way he died. And Damned if these people did not um, sit like catty corner on some pavement outside our house stalking us for months at a time. Okay? Nobody knew about that. We, I don't think we've ever told anyone that, people in my family, that we've told that. We've never told them that. But yeah, we were stalked by this insurance company and it was weird. It was like a men in black thing going on. And, and my mom would literally tell me, Karen, those people are back. Because, because there was an old lot by my house, right, where a church used to stand. And what was left was this old gravel, you know, parking lot um, where people used to park. And it was, you could see straight to my house, everything. And she would tell me, she said, Karen, do not go outside. Period. Do not go outside. And I was like, why? She's like, because if people are by our house again stalking us. We were, we were stalked by these crazy people from the insurance company, you know? Um, I don't even know what that means, you know? I don't even know what that means. I mean, we couldn't even go outside our own house. And this is, this is all the weird things that have happened over the years. Um, now, I have talked to my dad about the situation. Um, and all he has ever told me about his passing away is he had made an arrangement when he was very young and I don't know whether that was with aliens or what I don't know um, 
but that's all he says was he had made an arrangement when he was very young and he said it was about five or six years old that's all I know um, and that he told me that recently um, I, I think a few months ago and maybe that's why I've been pushed so much to make this video maybe that's why I, I, I keep feeling like I'm being pushed to make a video um, because usually I don't talk about things like this because it sounds crazy and you know it's it's uh, so much in the realm of most people not being able to understand it and you know personally I don't want to upset anyone I don't want to upset family members or anything like that never never do I want to upset anyone not even my mom or my brother ever when it comes to this situation and plus um, you know it's just not it's not right but you know a lot a long time has passed since he passed away um, also uh, I'm sorry uh, I don't mean to cry and get emotional um, also there's a few other things I want to add to this um, you know we had such a big funeral and it wasn't us that had it people just showed up um, there was like the funeral home was really big but so many people were there at this particular funeral at my dad's funeral that people were literally standing outside the funeral home to get in to see my dad's body okay that's how big this was and I think for his parents and especially for his twin and, and me and my family it would have been much better if we had had a smaller funeral um, and if you were at my dad's funeral thank you very much for coming um, it's just I think the circumstances were so bizarre that maybe it would have been a little bit better if we had a smaller funeral um, but that's in a hindsight type of situation because there were so many people there that I did not personally know and um, you know when I'm put in that situation sometimes especially a funeral situation I feel very uncomfortable I think a lot of people do they just don't say anything about it um, and there is one other situation that happened while I was in high school after my father died and if you've ever experienced this and I know a lot of people have where someone has been curious about you know your father's you know a family member passing away you need to report this to the authorities whoever it is that's bothering you okay when I was in hold on a second I shouldn't drink the coffee um, when I was in um, high school, um, and I'm not going to tell anybody who this is because if I were to tell who, my brother who this was or my mother, oh my fucking God. Um, but this guy still still lives in that town where I went to high school. Well, anyway, this person showed up into my life in high school. And he said that he um, was working with the police department and he had some information about my dad's death. Okay, this was two years after my dad died. My dad's case was supposed to be closed and over with. Okay, it, it was not supposed to be opened as far as I knew. It was not supposed to be opened, okay, or anything like that. But he came to me and said he had all this information about my dad. And I, I was in shock, okay. I did not know what to do about this. I didn't know what to say about it. I, you know, I just didn't know what to do. So... If you have someone that's coming to you telling you information about your father's death or whoever it may be and you don't want to know about it okay you tell them no thank you or just say no I, I don't want to know because <clears throat> this person kept bothering me over and over and over and where I'm from you know southern hospitality is a big thing and how I grew up you know I really didn't grow up learning how to say no okay I really didn't you know because you know you're always taught how to have manners and you know be polite and things like that but you're really not taught how to say no or, or to be in situations like that and say hey no no I, I don't want to know well anyways um, so he actually one day I kid you not brought me this police report and was going over and telling me everything about my dad's body and how he had died and this and that and the autopsy and all this kind of shit and I just, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I just wanted to scream bloody murder. And I couldn't, I couldn't do that. You know, I can't do anything. And I felt like so, 
like I was being stopped by someone I didn't want to be stopped by who was driving me crazy about my dad's death, you know, that honestly, I didn't want to know these things. And honestly, the things he told me, no one needs to know about a relative's death unless you want to know about it or unless you're a family member and you want to know about it, okay? You don't need to know about these things, okay? Because it just makes everything that much worse, you know, especially in a, in a situation where there was a freak accident, okay? So, um, and I think that's another reason why I left high school when I did, because I, uh, my mom was driving me crazy, you know, she was drinking a lot, and um, I really felt like I needed to leave because I was going in, like, literally, like, I feared for myself, you know, I feared for my life, I feared for myself, I feared for my brother, that we weren't going to make it out of this situation, um, and so I thought the best thing to do was to leave, because I felt like I was going insane having to deal with all this, this stuff, and I think he's part of the reason why I just left, because he didn't leave me alone until I left, this, this guy did not leave me alone, and I just, Mm. Um. Oh man, I just mm. it, it's a really it was a really bad situation, and I felt like I was kind of just being pushed, 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 pushed so hard to leave, you know, to leave my high school, and I only had like three more months till I graduated, and I w I was making damn good grades, um. So I did. I left on my 18th birthday because I couldn't take no more. So, please, if you have a situation like that where you have someone that's bothering you that has information from the police, which he had no business having, um, he was not a police officer at that point, he graduated one year before me, he had no business having those records, okay, no business whatsoever. If you have someone in your life that is bothering you like this, please notify the police tell them what is going on tell them this person is harassing you bothering you stalking you and get a fucking restraining order because that's what i should have done i should have gotten a restraining order against him and i mean it was so so horrible at that time in my life and you know i was still i was having to deal so much with my mother and keeping me and my brother safe at that particular time in my life and and doing my schoolwork and everything like that that i could not deal with anything else in my life I, I just couldn't you know and I was drawing the line everywhere I could to just kind of block things off and keep myself as stable as possible so um anyway if you have a situation like that and you're a teenager please notify the police immediately even if you're adult and you didn't solicit this information contact the damn police and say hey this person bothered me I didn't ask for this information because I guarantee you they don't have the right to have that information in the first place. Um, anyway, so that's all the bizarre circumstances that happened before and after my father's death. Um, the last time I saw, um, well, I I've, I've talked to my dad since, but um, he did come when my cousins came um, with my Aunt Polly, and they came in the house about a week before, and my Aunt Polly passed away too. Um, so they came in together about a week before because my cousins were coming up and, um, that's a different story. I'm not really going to get into it, but, um, anyway, they were here for a very specific reason. Um, but anyway, um, I hope this helps some of you who are dealing with any kind of freak accident that you have had with a relative or anything like that. It's very difficult to deal with. It's, it's hard for, um, even me to process it sometimes, you know, and all the strange things that have happened over the years, it's, it's just, it's weird, you know, it's really weird, that's all I know what to say, I mean, if I could exhume my dad without causing anyone grief, <laughs> just to see if that was actually my dad, I would, but, you know, <laughs> um, there are still so many relatives of mine that are living, and I would never want to upset them, now, if I could scan that ground, and see if that was his body for sure, I would, um, without digging him up or anything, but the tech doesn't exist, so, or if it does, I don't know about it, so, um, yeah, because, because I would never want to upset anyone in my family regarding his death, because everyone was so upset for so many years when it happened in the first place, and it kind of has never stopped, you know, everybody in that town has just been upset about his death, and, 
it's it's just never really stopped, you know, and it, it, it really left a community really um, hurt and wounded, you know, and um, but anyway, if um, if you are at my father's funeral, thank you very much for coming, um, even though it was so many years ago, um, I could not cope with a lot of things that were going on, and um, when I can't cope like that, I tend to go in a shell, and I don't come out for a long time. I'm kind of like a turtle in that way. So, and it's, it's not good. It's just not good not to be able to, you know, talk to someone and deal with someone. And other things happened in my life at that time that really kind of set me off. So, anyway, I know this is a very long video. But I think a lot of people need to hear this story. Because maybe someone else is going through it. And maybe someone else has had... All these weird situations happened to them over the years, and maybe they need to learn how to deal with it, you know, because I'm 43, and sometimes, sometimes, I mean, certain things will hit me, like, not real, like certain songs, oh my God, I cannot listen to Groovy Kind of Love, oh my God, I can't do that, because my mom and my dad used to um, listen to that all the time, I, I can't listen, I will, will start crying, can't listen to that, um, yeah, and it's been years and years, and I finally put my father's pictures back up again. So, um, anyway, I don't, I don't know. I, I hope some of you get something good out of this. And I know I look terrible, but I'm getting over a little bit of an infection right now. So, um, anyway, I love you all. I hope this helps some of you. Um, and if you are part Native American or you have Native American, um, or maybe your grandparents were Native American. It's not a normal to talk to spirits or anything like that. And um, it's not abnormal, apparently, to to see um, maybe relatives on spaceships and things like that because they believe that Native Americans, no matter which tribe it is, they believe they are from um, the stars. Period. So they believe that, and that's that's their folklore. Uh, excuse me, that's their folklore, and that's their, their history. So anyway, it's not, it's not as abnormal as it may seem. It's just, I was shocked by it because, well, at that point in time, I didn't know that that's what they believed and that's what they thought. So when I had that vision at a specific time in my life, it disturbed me so badly because I didn't know what the hell was going on, you know. I really didn't. And, oh, I was just totally freaked out. So, but anyway, um, ugh, my lips are dry. I think I got a virus. You know, see, Brianna brought home the flu, right? And then I got over that, and then I had another infection on top of that. So, uh, I'd be glad to stay healthy and not be sick. Oh, my God. Um, anyway, I love you all. I'll talk to you later. I am going to try to start uploading videos so more often simply because I want to. <laughs> anyway, bye. Love you all. Bye.